Harry, great to see you. We're here at Celtics training facility, Lennox Town. Um, fantastic facility. The sun is shining. We're not in Australia. We are up in Scotland. <laughs> so the big decision that you had to make, or how much of a tough decision was it when you got the opportunity to come and work with Ange? Uh, well, I, I was actually going in for a job. Um, and I, I felt the, the interview process for that job was going well. And let's just take, for example, let's just say that happened on a Tuesday. On a Thursday, I received a, a message off the, the manager. And once reading it, I, I was actually taken back by the message itself. And I thought there and then, I can't pass this opportunity to work with not only a, a great manager, but an Australian manager that has done it the tough way and been able now to, to come in and and really learn off someone because I've gone into coaching um, straight off the back of playing, which I love doing, there's no question, but I've never really had guidance. I never really had guidance in the way of certain things. So for this opportunity that he's presented me, I had to take it. And like I said, I've, I, I will be forever grateful. In the first few months that you've been here, settled in, um, what's, what's it been like? Ooh, it's not hard, is it? <laughs> I mean, everyone keeps telling me it rains, it snows, and everything. And it's it's actually beautiful. I mean, look, the rain does come in, and it is like that. But that's what it's it's part and parcel of football, you know. So, I've I've enjoyed it. Uh, the people here are fantastic. It it was difficult at start because you've got to get to remember all the names. But once you get comfortable with that, um, comfortable with the way that they structure things, uh, because I'm used to giving orders. Now I'm kind of receiving them, and then being able to. Uh, uh, speak them in that way so you've got to learn their style so it's, it's a good learning curve for me uh, I'm enjoying it it's, it's a test um, but no I am enjoying it so you've talked whenever we chat and we catch up your, your love of the game we know but your love of coaching and management you, you always speak about that in abundance puts a smile on your face so what's the difference from the assistant manager as opposed to the to being the main manager are you enjoying it and do you find that there's less pressure um, I look, it's it's a different role, as you say. Um, to be able to like just concentrate on coaching, which like I said, we have some we have some great coaches here, and we kind of share the load. Uh, so to be able to take individuals aside and work on them personally, that's what I find rewarding. And to be able to sit uh, through the games and kind of take back and not being able to bark directions and all that and obviously clearly watch uh, the manager in full flow, which is which is good to watch. Uh, but to be able to take back and relax in a, a decision, you know, you don't have to make that decision because it, it's, it's down to make. You can have an input, but it's about just having and seeing the game in a, a completely different way to how I was when I was managing. Uh, and then I can sit back and watch it again through the videos and to be able to concentrate more on the individuals and make them uh, a better player which then will make the team a better team so the repetition of individual coaching as well that, that's something that i you know i think we've we've kind of gone away from because all i ever remember doing with you after training along with ian hart was just striking balls eddie gray would take us and we'd do repetition and you know i was in i was in australia coaching myself taking a few lads for extra 1v1s, fitness coach coming over saying you can't do too many of them and it used to really it used to really get me aggravated so I think the individual stuff I've seen you doing here is invaluable because you you know you get you get the situations in games where you find yourself. Yeah and I, and I think people need to practice now practice doesn't make per perfect practice makes permanent if you do it right. Now you can tell someone to just go whip a ball in. Yeah that's great but you know it's it's a skill. So you've got to be able to work on it. You've got to be able to break it down for them. You've got to be able to sit there and go, okay, instead of snatching at it, you've got to make sure the ball's out your feet. You've got to make sure your foot's planted nice. You've got to make sure your head's down. You've got to make sure you're, you're hitting the target. So it's all these kind of things that you've got to think about when you're doing the individual stuff. And that kind of helps because you're not worrying about the bigger picture. So I can really narrow in on my one-to-one -one kind of stuff while I'm working here. Quality. Now you've played some massive clubs. Yeah, with huge fan bases, Liverpool, Galatasaray, Leeds United. Your thoughts on Celtic and the city of Glasgow itself and their fan base, has it surprised you or is it something that you've, you, you knew was already here? Look, we, we always hear of the, uh, the amazing support that um, the teams get up here. Uh, 
and I wanted to witness it. And I remember seeing the opening day uh, and hearing you'll never walk alone. Now I've only really only heard that at Liverpool and that is something special. That's where the hairs on the back of your neck stand up. But I was actually taken back how the Celtic fans sing it. And it was beautiful. And even I was like, wow. And I, I suppose now as, as being a coach, you can actually take a little bit more of the atmosphere in. So to be able to sit back, watch and see it and hear it, it is something nice. I mean, some of the, the way that they, they're constantly singing, they are the 12th men, they are driving that team forward because this team plays at a high power. You know, they are running full on. They're, they want to steamroll teams and you need a fan base to equal that. And this fan base is equaling it. So they're actually, you know, working together as part of a, a unit to be able to, to dominate the game and also get past the opposition. Well, that was one of the big things I've been chatting to Ange when he talked about wanting to entertain and excite these type of fans. He didn't want to play like a, a negative style of play. You know, the fans want to get off their seats and entertain it. How, how have you found that with the, the, obviously the style, the unique style that Ange wants to put on and you're coming on board with that? So again, the, the way that it's, it's merging, it's perfect. Uh, we, look, we know that the manager's always been about ball possession, wanted to control the game, uh, always have that high press, trying to run teams into the ground. And it, it takes a lot out of the players because it's hard work. You know, it's, it's easy to destroy. It's easy to sit back and boot balls away and just sit in there. And it's, it's, it's harder to create. It's harder to constantly run at people. It's harder to find space and all that. But it's fun because if everyone's on the same page, it works. And then in moments, especially what I've seen is when players may have drop their heads slightly or this that. that's where the the fans kick in you know with the with the chanting with the with the constant cheering with the constant driving the team forward and they get them excited so when you do receive the ball you want to go that extra mile you want to go that extra extra sprint that extra cross that extra finish you want to be able to do that to to excite this lot so is there anything since your time here that you've found out about yourself as a coach or anything that's inspired you to want more of it? Because I know how hungry and desired you are to be the top coach at some point in European football, no doubt. So was, what, what have you learned in the last, last few months of being here? I've, again, it, it, it's, it's been nice to have obviously had the, the, uh, to be in charge, but like I said, I've never kind of done the, the coaching style of, of working with someone else. So I've enjoyed that. Like I said, there's less pressure. And I'm not saying there's, there's like less pressure because the amount of pressure the manager actually puts on you to deliver what he actually wants is 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 high, and I, I, I quite like that. Uh, I'm, a, I'm I'm a firm believer in every training session should be like your last one, so make sure it counts, and it's it's the same as the way he he thinks as well. So I wouldn't turn around and say that it's easier. It's it's just a different kind of pressure because again you're delivering the message of how he wants it and you're structuring it in your training sessions to make it right that when the players go out there they're feeling confident and then you've got to work a little bit of magic of what you feel like you can bring into this team to hopefully make them a better better squad so, so as, a, as a manager you've been there you've you've done it you've had a go working with Ange as the manager and just give us a, an insight as to what your day-to-day -day roles and responsibilities are for the people that are not involved in football. I think he expects the, the same kind of effort, uh, the same mentality that I brought as a player uh, to, his, to his coaching staff, to his squad, to his players. Um, again, it's not about me bowling in here and saying, oh, this is what, this is you know, what I've done, that, that, that. It's, it's not about, and I've never been like that, even as a, as a manager myself. It's, it's not about me, it's about making your players better. And that's, like I said, that's the one thing I love doing. I loved when I was working with the team and creating things, but I enjoyed working personally with players and working on certain skills because even when I did certain drills here and you see it perform in a game, that's like, even though it's a squad and that, you go, yeah. You know, you, you get so that you get your So you, you, Your job here is to make the players better for the manager, you know, because he's got enough on his plate. And so our job is to come out here and make sure everything is run perfect for him Quality. and the team. And the team. Now, speaking of players and managers, what managers in the past did you enjoy going to training for and playing for? Yeah. 
and do you wish you had the chance to play under Ange? Because when I said I would like to play under Ange, he turned around to me and said, you couldn't have done the running that I required from the top end of the field. So he put us in my place and I totally respect that. So what, what managers excited you? And obviously, what, what would, could you have loved to have played under Ange? Depends, uh, at what age was I? Or you would have been, let's give you an 18 to 25. 18 to 25, I could have easily played for him. Yeah. I could have easily played for him because I, I loved running with the ball. I loved running in behind with the ball. I would have been very happy to be able to just stand on the wing and just, you know, wait until that ball comes to me because we would have dominated a lot of the possession. Um, I didn't mind doing the defensive side of it. Um, and especially at a, at a younger age, that's what I would have uh, been done and been able to do it. Well, now, you start as a defender. Yeah, I did start as a, a, a left back. So the defensive role for me was never a, a, a bad thing. But to be able to just stand out wide and receive the ball, especially in the final third, I would have loved that. You know, I would have loved that. And which um, managers give you that freedom? Um, I would have, <laughs> I won't lie, I would have been, even though with the fullbacks bombing all off it, I would have been telling them to, like in certain times, to be getting out of my way because they said if you're a winger, you'd want to be able to express yourself. Um, later on in my career, I like, even if we go from say 27, don't know, I changed my role because I, I, I am a, I'm a player that likes the ball, so I would have come to the ball a lot more. Um, and like I said, the way that uh, the manager likes to play, he likes players either staying away from it and doing their business in certain areas where I actually like receiving the ball sometimes 10 yards into my own half and creating something that way. I, look, I still think I could have played, um, but clearly I didn't because he didn't pick me for the World Cup. So, <laughs> but I, I, you know what? I was always going to ask him that question, but two or three sessions when I first came here, I knew the reason why. And I, like I said, I understood that and I respected it. The high intensity. Yeah, the high intensity. But look, I was, I could have done it at a younger age, but it's just, you just evolve your game at a, at a, at a different thing, well, he, at a different level. He did give a comment. He did say he wouldn't have minded having me, you and um, Vadux as the front three. I think yeah. it was just being nice to me because obviously he was at the Aussie <laughs> internationals. Now you've played at European Champions League yourself. You've won it with Liverpool. You've been there with Leeds United. How geared up is this team at Celtic to go on and have a have a, a good season domestically and in European football? And obviously there was a baptism of fire against Real Madrid, and I thought you scored very very well. Um, I won't lie, we're disappointed in the in the results. Um, the the Real Madrid game, I, I felt we handled ourselves very well. I didn't think there was much in it. Uh, we played out from the back, they played out from the back, they controlled the midfield, we controlled it at certain times. Uh, we played some dangerous balls in there to get into some great positions. They played some wonderful balls to get into some great positions. Unfortunately, the, the only thing that we, we, we didn't do was to convert, and we should have converted. You know, we had great opportunities to be maybe one or two nil up before even, you know, Valverde got down there and that ball he played in was kind of the exact same ball that Jota played in for Obata. You know, it's just that they finished it and we didn't. So that's what hurts. Because other than that, there was nothing really in the game. And then just recently, uh, the last European game, yeah, we, we went there for the win. We, I, I felt we deserved it, we created more chances. Yes, we're playing a completely different team, a counter-attacking team that has speed. And yes, if you are playing if you do have speed in team, yeah, you are going to drop off because you want people to run into the space, which clearly they, they did and they scored. So we're just disappointed. Well, he would be very disappointed. I'm, a, I, I'm, I'm, hurt, I'm, I'm gutted that we didn't win, but I'm happy that we're creating the chances. And even just recently, the one there, which I didn't realise, and I was just walking, um, walking through one of the strikers, their, their clips, and the one where, where Jacko lays it off for Dyson and Dyson actually connects properly. And I actually, from the video, it looks like he just mishits it, but he's actually hit it perfect, but it's hit the guys on the side of the face and it goes out. So it's just these little things that are just not falling for us, but you've got to keep being in there and being in them positions. And I'd be worried if I would sit here and go, you know, we had one chance, but we didn't. You know, the last game we had like 16 chances and yes, it, it, it hurts, but there is something special in this team that, you know, they've just got to realise it more. Like you, you just talked about winning the, the European Cup with Liverpool. We weren't the best team in that league. 
we were well structured, we were well rehearsed and we knew what we wanted to do. So exactly what this manager is doing, we, every player knew his role and his things, but in moments we just took our chances. You know, and that's the thing with Champions League, that it could be ruthless. You could dominate a game, but if you just don't take your chances, you could be left behind. Well, hopefully that wisdom and knowledge you can pass on for the, to the lads for the rest of the season going forward in the European games. A, t a match this season that did come out when it was everything seemed to be perfect was the match against Rangers, the old firm. You just blew them away. A 4-0 victory, how, how did that feel to be part of that, sitting on the dugout and knowing that you were part of that team? It's, look, every game you want to win, it doesn't matter if it's a derby, whether it's just a, a, a training match. Even, I mean, some of the... the the aggression that you see, which I love, even in training games, like the players do not like losing. And I love that. So when I see that in training, I know that my players, well, the, the manager's players are ready to take on anyone. And yes, we know it's a huge derby. It's, it's, it's the biggest derby, you know, um, and it was nice to be a part of it. And yes, I could have enjoyed it. Uh, like I could have enjoyed it. I mean, I enjoyed it because I could actually see it, uh, which was excellent. But yeah, of course, you, you want to win your derby, especially against the, the local ones. Um, but again, we, we went out there and we played the way the manager wanted us to play. You know, it wasn't about, oh, yes, there was individual brilliance, but the individual brilliance came from a team pass. You know, it wasn't come from a, a it, it came from what the manager had works on every single day to make them players perfect, that when that moment happened, it happened. Well, I know if you don't like losing this team, you're in the perfect position, in the perfect place because you hated losing. You wouldn't speak to me for three or four days if you lost that golf computers, eating that's a pizza. Why we always, that, that's why we always spoke every single day. Challenge, I won. Oh, yeah, we challenge each other all the time. <laughs> I'm not even going to go down that path. So that, that's good that you're in an environment where you can, you can breed off that because you, you, know, you, you hated losing. You were that winning mentality. And that's good that you challenge it. Now, Celtic, the two in Australia at the end of the year. How excited are you about going back home with the team and what will make it extra special? I, I think it's fantastic that the manager's going out there. I think it's great that he, he goes back to Australia and, you know, people can see it because he, he works hard. He, 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 he works extremely hard. I'm a hard worker, but it's, it's very hard to beat him in in the morning. You know, and I, I get here early and then it's very hard to kind of leave because he's still here. So he's he's so very you don't dedicated. to be bludgeoning off early. <laughs> yeah, but he, and I love that because I think as as the the boss, you, you you should be doing that, and it shows a great sign of well dedication, and you you're in for the cause. And it'd be nice to go back and let people see firsthand because you can watch games on TV, you can fast forward, rewind, all that, but to watch something live is like I said, I, I say it's priceless and. You know, it's, it's something that he can have a moment and, and enjoy. And I know we've got the two games out there and he will want to win them. I can tell you now he will want to win them and he will be like full on. But it'd be nice to just show the, the, the Australian public what he's all about. Like he's got a, a, a Celtic team uh, playing a certain style of football that is rock and roll. You know, it's 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 hardcore. It's 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 full on. It's yeah, it's his style. What's what's he like behind the scenes? Is he as intense as he looks when he's on the park? Um. Yeah. 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 Which which I like. You know, um, it keeps you on your toes. It makes you think. Right, have I got everything sorted? Have I got everything planned right? I've got to make sure because he demands his his standards are here. They're not, they're not here. And the only reason he's got here is because his standards are here. And I like that. I mean, when you do catch him, like I said, uh, and, and you can have that maybe five minutes and you get him maybe off the subject of, of football, he's, he's just like a normal guy. You know what I mean? You can see he's, he's, I, he's got this love, of, love of, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Like, he's just like a nice person to talk to. Right, when you, when you get, but like I said, you can see his mind always ticking about football. So when you do talk football, he's, he's very much straight to the point and he likes it. I mean, he keeps himself to himself, which is fine, which is fine. But like I said, yeah, you, you feel like you've got to be ready. 
you've got to make sure you're ready for it. Always on your guard and ready. Yes. Yeah, because yes. you can strike at any time. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes, and you just don't want to be on the end of that. You just want to make sure my job's done perfect. <laughs> don't but I like dryer. that, though. I like that. Looking ahead again at the World Cup, the Socceroos, they've got the World Cup. How do you think they, they're going to fare? Because I was, I was having a chat with a few of the, the lads. The success for me was the way and the mannerism actually qualifying. It was, it was a, a hard way to do it, got through it. That for me was a success. So how, how do you think the Socceroos will go in this one? Well, you're playing a World Cup, so it's not going to be easy. Simple as that. I don't, I don't care whether you breeze through the qualifications and you score 24 goals and you cruise through it. You're playing a World Cup against the best, best players in the world, best teams, best countries in the world, and that's how you get there. Once you're there, it's a, it's a completely different story. Things have got to fit in right. Things have got to be uh, well rehearsed. Uh, we, they don't have a lot of time. Um, you've got to be prepared. You've got to take your chances. It's going to be tough. So I, I, I wish them the best. It's going to be, it's going to be hard, and I, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing them. I want to watch them, and I hope. I hope they go through. I, I would love it if they went through. I, and, and people might tell you, oh, no, you're like, no, I really would. I would love to see them go through because they, they copped a lot of stick throughout the qualifications and everyone's going in. For people that, whether they've been there or not, we all know how hard it is because you're playing week in, week out for your club and then to come in there and to play a game in, in, and we fly a lot, it's difficult. So I take my hat off, you know, especially in that last, that last game where they, they held their nerve and they got through on penalties, right? Which was excellent. We've been there before and done it, and look what happened. We surprised a lot of teams. So I really hope they go out there and play with no fear. That's 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 what I'm hoping. I hope they go out there and enjoy it. You know, they don't they don't get hurt, but they go out there and just enjoy it, and hopefully they surprise a few people. Invaluable bit of advice there. Yep. Well, a man that's going to be involved in that. I think he played a key part in the game against Peru. Aaron Moy. He's got some geese here now at Celtic with you. Um, did you actually play with him? I may have played one or two when he was younger. Yeah. He came in when he was younger, but he's very quiet. Even now he's still quiet. So half the time when we have a conversation, it's just me talking. And he just <laughs> smiles at me. <laughs> but no, he's, he's, a great, he's, a, he's a great guy. He's a fantastic player. Yeah. Like I said, I never really had the chance to, to study him and watch him. But here you can see the quality he has, his vision. Of his uh, of his passing to see is it's up there. You can see why he's played at the highest level. Well, even just observing the sessions and the little tight possession games that you were you were obviously driving and getting them getting them through just to see he's, he's got that mindset. He loves a little tight space, his little flicks on the corner. Didn't look out of place and a fit Aaron Moy playing regular, getting game time, going into the World Cup. That's good for Celtic and the Socceroos. Hundred percent, hundred percent, and and he he'll get his opportunities because as I said, we have quite a few games coming up and the way we play the, the manager he may rotate he may not but there will be opportunities where Aaron will play and like I said I think his quality will shine above everybody else's and he started he, well his first little venture into Europe was with St Mirren just down the road there's a massive amount of Aussies now playing in the Scottish leagues I think it's 14 in total at the moment it's a great pathway for them into Euro European football now yeah it's, it's not a bad little league, uh, you know, yes, you could, you, you could say that could there be more competition, but again, I mean, every, every ground you go to gives you different little challenges, you know, uh, we, we've played Ross County a couple of times, you know, the, the travel up there, which is a lovely drive, but tight little ground, the work ethic from the opposition, I mean, you've got to understand as well is when Celtic go and play these, all these teams is, this is the game that they're looking forward to. So even their levels of the players have, 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 have risen. And that's the thing about being champions, is that everybody wants to knock off a champion. So you can't have a bad day at the office, otherwise you are gonna be battered from pillar to post, you know, by everybody, because you're not supposed to do that. So the pressure on these players, these Celtic players, to perform week in, week out is, is, is huge. And you can't afford to, to go anywhere and, and have a slip up, but the opportunity for opposition to come and, and show what they've got is, you know, it, it's tough, it's tough. So they could be in the right place at the right time when they're playing the bigger teams to get, to get a move. Yeah, yes, yes. But again, it's our job as staff to, to prevent that, 
to be able to make sure our players are ready for every challenge, to give them the information, just enough information so they can go out there and perform and do what they need to do. Going back in the day, me and you travelling, roommates, all we ever used to do was computer games. Um, I remember the actual goal celebration, I scored a goal against Watford and we'd been up all night playing some Star Wars Anakin flying <laughs> race machine. Yes. It was yes. like 4 a.m. in the morning. Yes. David Scored Leary. two great goals, didn't we? Two great goals, me and you scored. Yeah. David Leary had about a goal. 40 yards out each, weren't yeah, they? Yeah, I would say so. Mine, mine was about 45. That's fine. Yeah. We're getting in a little bit of trouble. Late for breakfast, we were so tired. He said, You two better sort out for the game. And we went away doing this celebration with a computer controller in our hands. We used to play FIFA, we used to play Pro Evo. I'm super jealous at the minute. Why? Because you've been given a legend FIFA card for the new game. How does that make you feel? Awesome. <laughs> it I does, agree. doesn't it? Yeah, of course it does. I mean, in a way, you, you kind of wanted these cards to be out when we were playing. Because it's a, you know, you see all the players have it and you know, the ratings and the, the challenges that we would have had as, as players going, oh, well, look at my rating better than your rating. <laughs> ah, yeah. You'd probably go and work on it yeah. on the training pitch to make sure that your, your, your ratings got up there. And yeah, it, it is a pride thing. Um, but no, when, um, when EA came to me and, and, and told me about what they were going to do, it's an honour. You know, because you, you played the game, you go away from the game and you still want to put back in the game. And, you know, for them to kind of recognise that and, yeah, I think my scores are actually not bad. I was going to say, do you know your ratings then? Yeah. Yeah, come yeah, on then. I'll, I'll tell you if they're realistic. What, what, what have you got? I think I was 89. For overall? Yeah, no, yeah, 89 overall, right? Right, okay. I mean, there's only a, there was only a few in the 90s. I'm, yeah, I'm thinking more like 85, but yeah, carry on next. What else? I think it was 89 or 87. No, I, I don't know. It's I, too I high know. anyway. No, it's not. No? You know it's not. No. Because I could shoot, I could strike the ball, right? Yeah. The shooting was good. Could head a ball. Right? Yeah, I could head a ball, right? I, was, I could dribble, yeah. right? I could dribble. Yeah. Um, you couldn't pass. You, you never, know, well, the, you the never, card actually, you never the, passed. The card no. actually stated, right? Um, I have my, my, on the game, it's like, um, you have a certain gift in the game, right? Right. So mine is passing. So my ability to pass. That'll do me. I'm, I'm finished. Come on, man. No, you I'm know. finished. You know, I could, you know, I could split anything. You, you know, I could split a defense <laughs> with a pass. Fair. What I did right? look back on. The only thing I always got annoyed about is my physicality. It's like so low. And I'm like, I think they've, they've done that because of my injuries. Right. But I was, I was actually quite strong. And like I still, you know, and that that that's the only one that hurts me. <laughs> I was like, what? But hey, it's it's fantastic well, to have the card. You've got a FIFA card, mate, and you deserve it. Thank it you. was a pleasure H interviewing you. It was a pleasure playing alongside you, and I'm delighted you're here at Celtic. I wish you all the best for this season with Celtic and whatever happens in the future in your managerial career. Because I know you're a winner, mate, and I wish you all the best. Thanks, Bill. Appreciate it. Did you enjoy that? There's so much more, so why not hit subscribe and download the Optus Sport app.